Good morning. How are you all doing today? So, markets are going up. The uh, in a choppy way, kind of, but uh, get a little bit of an acceleration going on here. Hard to, I don't know, we don't really see much of the acceleration. It kind of comes in spurts um, intraday. But you can see, just looking at the daily chart, that prices are starting to lift off a little bit here. Right? And I, they really should from this consolidation that occurred. And uh, so that when I say lift off, I mean, the bars, the candles start to move uh, in a way that the next bar opens up where the other one left off and it begins to push higher. Now we're starting the day that way. We'll have to see where this day goes. It's in an uptrend. It's got nothing to the left to stop it from going higher. Uh, the 60 minute chart has a downside shakeout in it. You know, and it's consolidating at resistance. So the price pattern says it's going to go higher. Yeah, so how to define that, right? So when you say something, price pattern defines says it should go higher. So as someone that's been educating people about technical analysis and reading charts for a long time, you often hear comments about price patterns. And well, if someone just says that this is what it's supposed to do, uh, but doesn't tell you why and explain it in a manner that uh, helps you to take it into the future for you to make money with it. It's really of little value. So why is it supposed to go higher? Well, historically, when price patterns are in an uptrend, we assume that buyers are going to step up on dips. And where are they going to step up on dips? And so that's the next part of the thought process. So this prior swing low here, when move started with the bottoming tail bars and went up, well, definitely there's going to be there, but in a strong uptrend, it's not supposed to come all the way down there. So that's a sign of weakness. It's supposed to come down to where it consolidated. So many will look at a chart, any chart, and say, well, what was resistance should become support. That's the theory. Well, that you'll find out is quite subjective. And what we really have is this congestion right here. That was a reaction on the way up is where the buyers stepped up again. And then at that location, we're supposed to see price action like that. Now, price is retraced all the way back up to the resistance. And rather than pull back, over here, created resistance. Rather than pull back over here, it's going sideways. We suggest it's going to go higher. Right? And should come not come back down to here or here. So that creates our bias that it should keep going up and should not come down here. So we take that into the trading day with our personal trading plans and do what we're going to do. And by the way, the weekly is also pointing up. Now, SPX, today's Wednesday and it's MT Live. So, so it's an SPX day. So as far as premiums go, the upside, you'd have to get really far away because if our bias is that this can continue to move up, well, we really don't know up to where, but we could look at things like average range. And so this would be a kind of a way of us kind of guesstimating if we chose to do the call side uh, is to say, well, what's the average range? And we'd go and look at SPX and look at the range of these bars and say, well, you know, what is it from high to low? What are the bigger bars? And kind of then you got some bigger ones down here and kind of say, all right, well, if that range was to expand over the course of what's average and we could add a little bit. Where would that put us on the upside as a probable extension point where it wouldn't go much higher? So on the downside, we'd say, well, we don't want to see it get down below here. So if we could get a, a premium, 
down here and we have to go look at SPX, which we're going to do. It should look similar. Not quite because it doesn't have the 24 hour chart, but there would be this level down here and say, well, if we could get premium down below here, there's an unfilled gap. So there's the danger here, so to speak, in that the this should go up this should hold right it shouldn't even get down there so premiums down below here should be okay even though we've got this unfilled gap and up above as i said with the looking at the ranges and you've got this gap up you've got this stall and prices are doing nothing right here but we pick a point up above and jake is giving me some guidance here with numbers i guess he's already looked at the premium 3470, 3480, and 3420. I don't know about 3420, Jake. I'm sure there's premium there, but um, so here's here's my thought on that. Right? You go down here, there's gonna be less premium. Right? That's a given. If you go 3420, if prices were to drop down there, you know that you've got this area that prices that traders are going to buy at. So your risk is that that they don't step up in that area. I, well, nobody knows, but I get what you're saying is that, look, you can lean against that area, so to speak, um, especially if it starts to drop to the downside here to get that extra premium, knowing that there's going to be buyers at this level and should be your, um, your bulletproof vest, let's say, <laughs> of that of the markets not continuing to drop down below the strikes that you've picked for your um, your spread. Okay, let's see where others are. NQ. Oh, stalling momentum. You know, traders are here waiting, you know. This is getting a little far ahead of itself. How far can it go? You know, 12,000? Anybody go for 12,000? I think that's a good target uh, for prices to move up to. See if they can make that run this week. Uh, so far, we've got the beginnings of a little breakout failure here. See a little bull flag there and the move, and then an automatic, not automatically, it quickly started coming back in so a little apprehension about uh you know stepping up and accelerating i guess probably especially pre-market and you can see it here on the smaller time frames how the the selling came in right away and broke the trend on the uh the 15 minute and then buyers came in again at the next level so this is what we're talking about when we look to the left um first of all when prices consolidate as they did here they're not supposed to automatically get tired and sellers look to take profits so quickly so that's a piece of information that is given to us so hmm, he's getting a little tired here anyway so this is once this is broken similar to what i was saying in the s p is like what could we lean against so to speak and we could say even if we were going to be buying here and say we put on an initial position here and rather than put our stop loss here we put our stop loss with down here and share sized it accordingly so now we could sit through this pullback and let possibly buyers come in and repair the damage and i call this damage because of violating the trend and this now begins to um consolidate and then we could then pick a point where we would want to add to the position so uh, right now, just a slowing momentum this morning, a little bit of uh, apprehension to take the markets higher pre-market. Very little to stop it other than what's happened here pre-market. Um, I get a ticker symbol for... Uh, maybe somebody in the room can help you with that, Maddie. I don't know, really get what you want here. Let's somebody help with this. All right.
So I am just was just hanging there all day yesterday. First of all, it came down real hard. And then it just hung here all day and then last night. And so it's got a void above. So can this get above here? And why is that doing that? Okay. If it can get through here, well, now we've got the potential to go up. And we've got another line in the sand that's relatively close that we'll be keeping an eye on here this morning to see which way it goes. So this is what we do every day. We look at the broader markets. We compare them. How's one trading versus the other trading? So we've got the S&P up at the highs. We've got the Dow just sitting down here. Maybe maybe it can join the party. We've got the Qs up near the high, but hesitating. Right? Buyers are, are not that aggressive, even after this little rest. And the Russell attempting to join the party over here. It's got certainly got a pattern where it could and should start to pick up some momentum to the upside. And bonds kind of sitting here where a W bottom or new lows. So it's at support. We'll just have to see what happens. Oil just continues to be comatose. And we've got another bottoming tail bar. Let's see what happens. Gold. I'm not sure whether it can make a turn here um, at making a higher low or whether it's going to need to retest this bottoming tail bar. Um, so a little buying coming in. So definitely keeping an eye on gold in this area to see if buyers want to pick it up here. So the weekly, looking at the weekly, the extension, I kind of, I'd really like to see this pull back maybe just a little bit under that low, just on a historical price pattern basis. And, <clears throat> and looking at this weekly with the wide range bar, a little pullback in, into this area here, I think would be ideal. Uh, so one of the patterns that we use when it offers itself to us is a pattern in which it's made a big momentum move like this. Now, they don't often come down like that so hard and vertically, but the main part of what I'll show you is first the momentum move that creates the void and it makes a lower high and a lower low Maybe somewhere here. And that's just going to be your plain old pullback hook within an uptrend on the higher time frame. So that's what we'll be looking for in gold in the coming days and maybe into next week. And silver. Just no interest here at this time. It's holding up better after the run. But uh, it's not a pattern that, unless we this was to form a big bottoming tail bar, like something like this over here, I just don't have any interest at this time. So we'll see where all these go and what brings today. All yours, Dan. Good morning. Yep, with the NASDAQ strength, the fangs are doing well. You know, that Apple got another upgrade. It's, it's, I don't know what's going on with these analysts. Like, are, are, are they all having a contest to see who can give the biggest upgrade and who, and then they can, you know, send out a newsletter to their people saying, look, my, my analyst is the one who did this. It was Webb Bush who started this over the weekend, upgrading Apple to 510 or 20. I don't know what it was. And then two others came out, and now the same wed bush says, oh, no, I think it's 600 now. So four days later, four days later, he's changing it and upping it, $80, $90. 
I don't give it. But Apple got an upgrade. Tesla got an upgrade to 2,500. It's just so stupid to me when they, you know, they do it when it's here. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that game. Uh, but Google's holding. Facebook had some strength the last couple of days, actually. It's up here pre-market and looking higher. We did a put spread on Amazon yesterday. I don't know, Hector. I, you know, yeah, we we have all different flavors of contrarians, but I, I surely wouldn't. I mean, it's that's more of an of a of an individual thing. So so yeah. So hypothetically, Hector. You know, you could go to Yahoo Finance or whatever and find out how many brokers have, you know, holds or, or you know, they, they put them into categories, sell, hold, uh, strong, you know, strong buy, whatever. And then, yeah, it, you could draw a graph of that. And if it gets climactic to to the buy side, then absolutely I would I could you would use that as a contrarian indicator when the stock's expensive. Yes. Uh, but Amazon still looks great. All right, all our opens are fine. Ask me if you have any questions on anything. Um, I just posted an alert. Let's sell a third of Adobe here. Beautiful one, two, three. Uh, we got into um, NLW. Um, unfortunately, when it started Wigan on Monday, I legged into a covered call. So we're capping our gains, but still a nice, nice gain. Mark. Uh, big C. Wow. Uh, maybe right for an options trade. Uh, well, Mark, you know our approach, right? Everything starts with a bias of the chart. So I have no idea what you're thinking when you say right for an options trade. Tell, tell me what your bias is on the daily before we even talk about a stock or option trade. Tell me your bias. And I don't have one myself. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do with this thing. You know, it's greater than 100% retracement, uh, but it's a bullish 15 minutes. So, you know, I'm just verbally telling you what my thought process is. So I have no idea. Um, Lennon, Lennon Patino, welcome. I don't recognize your name, so welcome. But if you can put your where you're typing to me, if you can put your drop down to all panelists and attendees. Um, Andreas is asking about a plan. A plan, yeah, it had earnings. That's the that's an excessive gap. It's a bullish gap, but excessive. I mean, look at your weekly. It's gapping way the heck up here. So there, there's no trade to us, none. Um, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't touch this even for a day trade for 30 minutes to see what it's going to do. Uh, but Lennon here, is ask, he's asking for recommendations on Amazon. A 30 minute high, it looks like a directional. Uh, Lennon, if the, if, the, if the market's in a good mood and right now the queues still are, uh, we, we sold a put spread for Friday. And you can add if you if you like selling options, put spread looks fine. Uh, you aren't going to get as much juice as we got yesterday, um, but chart looks higher. It's a breakout of an ascending triangle and bullish consolidation. It, it looks higher. Uh, Jason Trump, uh, Trump sixty three eighty. Jason is our morning gapper. Yeah, yeah, that's a bullish gap. Um, yeah, let me put him in this bottom right. Yeah, so Trump, we'll keep an eye on. Uh, Roku, yeah, I have Roku in my list over here somewhere. Uh, 151. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I have Roku in my list here. It was a head and shoulders, but look, every time it tried to break down, it failed. And now it's now it's a bullish gap up. So yeah, definitely, definitely I like that. 
I'll put Roku in another chart and then it has a bullish gap 15 minute chart. Yeah, it looks good. Um, urban, urban 25 bucks. That's, it's a big gap. It's so, and it's acting bullish pre-market. I don't know, you just gotta keep an eye on it. JD, but on a true gap and crap parham, I like multiple up bars like this. This is a better gap and crap candidate if it were gapping up 10 bucks. Because see, it's farther from the 20 MA. Uh, so could it fall? Sure. But, you know, I, I, I like them more the better. So yeah, JD, <clears throat> I wish it was gapping more um, because it, it, it looks like it's going to find support in the gap fill. So I, I would like it better if the gap were bigger. Um, and to it, yeah, that was a one, two, three of ours in the weekend letter, and I didn't chase it on the gap on Monday. Uh, now it's gapping up too big. Now this could be a gap and crap candidate um, for a short-term call spread. I'm saying, look at this CRM added to the Dow, got a pop yesterday. Now capping a 250 to all time highs. Look at that. It's off my chart. I, I, I don't even know where 250 is. Right, Teron, I know. Um, but they're both candidates, um, you know, 30 minute low. You know, just let's watch a 30 minute low. And if they, that shows that selling is greater than demand and it, and it can't hold the gap up. So that, that's a good sign of short-term weakness. Let me continue here. Uh, I don't know what got this thing going, but it's, it's up here at 16. There's no pattern for me. Uh, now we're in this. I, I mentioned we sold a third pre-market. There's the Roku we talked about. Uh, DKS had earnings, 53.50. Gap's too big for me. I mean, again, look, it's off. It's off all my charts. So that that that's what we call a clue, being too big. Uh, Ron, A P H. <clears throat> no. Not unless it was gapping over Monday's high. I mean, there's there's no bullish pattern here. That's a that's a that's a big old mess. SMTC. It's strong. You know that was a buy setup, all time highs. It's worth watching. So there's the Apple upgrade postage. I think had earnings bearish gap down here. Uh, it's, you know, the gap's too big. We aren't gonna, we aren't gonna be able to sell a call spread. Hey, Debbie. Uh, o O M A. No pattern. H P E. Ten bucks. Um, possibly, possibly a condor. Because now it's gapping over the week's high. So you got nice support down here. I don't know. I think we can find better, but a put spread would be fine. Autodesk was a one, two, three here, but we knew earnings were coming up. Uh, now it's a bearish gap. I don't, we'll keep an eye on it. To it, we talked about gap and crap. HEI, I can't tell where you're gapping. Uh, Carnival said they're going to uh, delay some more sailings to next year but it's a one two three so if it can take out yesterday's high then it doesn't care about the bad news tesla we talked about urban we talked about toll brothers earnings um it's in a strong uptrend jwn what had a bearish gap down now it had a little bounce, just a beat up retail. I have no interest in that. 
Uh, this is no volume on Rick's plan that we looked at. EXPR, another beat up retail down to a dollar. That thing might might be on the chopping block to file bankruptcy. EV gapped up coming in. Uh, there's no pattern. Uh, DY. Um, we'll come back to it. It's worth watching. Cream, Dicks, we talked about. CHS. Uh, CHS. Uh, oh, wow, that scared me. Ooh, that made me jump. CHS is another, that's Chico's, another beat up retailer I have no interest in. Ford put spread candidate. If it's under last week's low, Ron, and you get good juice. Oh, yeah, I'm reading Ed. All right, good. Yeah, Ed, you know, around the country, around the world, people live in areas where they're susceptible to different national disasters. You got fires and mudslides out there in California, some some um, earthquakes here in South Florida. We get lightning and hurricanes. Uh, let me continue. Flidium, gaps too big. VRA. Oh, but yeah, okay, so now I'm into yesterday's watch list items. This was a, a one, two, three that somebody mentioned. Um, truck, bottom right. Mm, that ship was gapping a little less than that. Uh, CPA is a one, two, three I like from yesterday. Maxim, semis were strong yesterday. Um, semis gapping up here. Semis in the queues. Yep, they're still still going. Shop, uh, shop looks higher. Uh, nice, nice. That'd be a beautiful put spread candidate too. All right, remember yesterday, Greg and I were both independently talking about the market. Just, it, I mean, the queues churned their way higher into the close for an hour and a half. But we just felt like it was it was out of fuel, and now that I see Spiders Diamonds IWM selling off here at the open, it might be the same today. But yeah, shop put spread looks great. Um, let me take a look. Uh, Roku, I put in a window. Roku looks great too. Roku put spread. I'm gonna look right now. Since McGraw's probably on his third cup of coffee and not ready to work yet. So just eyeballing down there, maybe the 145s. Fifty by seventy-two for for Friday. Next week. Next week, there's good juice, but it's very spready. Wow, it's spready. The 150s, 375 by 495, $2 spread. Are you crazy, Roku? Earnings 11.4, so we're fine. So th this, is a, this is a beautiful candidate. I just need the spreads to contract. But I'm going to send out a telegram alert to put our loyal weekly options trader subscribers on notice. That, that's a beautiful setup. Same with Okay, look at cream, look at cream.